Hey guys, welcome to Need It, Make It. In this video, we're gonna take this small pumpkin, 3D scan it and 3D print it and see how it turns out. So stick around. I've already made other 3D scanning videos, so check them out in the link up there. Quickly, just to review, what are the important things when you're 3D scanning? Lots of light. So I've got two lights down here, lots of light up on the ceiling coming down as well. Surface texture, surface color, no sheen. You don't really want a sheen off of here. You'd like a matte finish. And a lot of variation on the surface is ideal. Those are really important things. A really good camera is important as well. And just as important, when you're taking the photos, take your time. Make sure that the camera has time to adjust and make sure that it's clear. Otherwise, a blurry photo is not going to result in a good 3D scan. Even though the surface color and texture is pretty much ideal, I think it's going to benefit from adding some more color, color variation to allow the software to differentiate the different size of the pumpkin more easily. A lot of you are probably saying, whoa, that's amazing. It probably takes years of practice. And yes, it does. It takes years of practice to get to this kind of level. The software I'm going to be using for this 3D scan is called Polycam. It has a feature called background masking. So anything in the background is going to be removed. Only the object that we're scanning is going to be captured. And that's part of the reason why it's important to have something below that's a solid color that it can differentiate fairly easily. That said, it's still probably a good idea to have a fairly clean background, not a lot of clutter so that there is no confusion when you're doing your scan. All right, let's start our 3D scan. Now, one thing you should know, you see the shadows coming along here? It's best to try and avoid those shadows if we can. So here's what I like to do. I like to move the object. I like to rotate the object. The software can pick up using the different textures and different surfaces on here in different color. It can tell which part of the object it's scanning in order to complete it. Uh, so what I like to do is little by little, rotate it, do some scans all the way around. Rotate it, do some scans. Now another way to do it would be to have a light source coming from the camera. That's a really good way as well. So anytime you move the camera, I'll pick up one of these lights and move it with the camera. And you can move the camera around fairly easily. That's another good method of doing it. And now the little trick that will make this so much easier to 3D print, and that is move your object so the bottom can be scanned. Doing this will allow the software to close the object completely, and it can then be brought into your printer software with no modification required. Now for this example, I'm trying to avoid printing with supports, so I will shift it down in the Z to start completely flat. And I honestly have not spent much time on the settings for this video. I'm printing this more to see how the scan looks in the print. This is a really quick print with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. For the filament, I think I'm gonna try this transparent green PETG. This is pretty awesome stuff. I think it's gonna suit the Halloween theme just fine. But I do want to dry this just a little bit, even though it's been packaged up in this dryer that I have. I'm printing with my Ender 3 version 2 using the M4 Boron Extruder, which is still going strong. I will say that the green filament does string quite a bit, even after drying. I've never really had much success with the transparent filament. Well, this PETG being so shiny, it's kind of tough to tell. And I have only two wall lines on this, so you can see right through it, and you can see the infill. So I need to do something about that. Give me a minute, and I'll bring you right back. So it's a 3D scan of a pumpkin printable. Well, at least 95% of it is. This could have been printed separately and attached if we wanted to, but I think this gives a good example of what can be done very quickly with a 3D scan going right to your 3D printing software. If I had taken more time on the settings and I had more time to print this model, I could have even had a much better result. And you can see that, for example, on the top here. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful. And if you did, make sure that you liked the video. And if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you do that as well. Take care, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.